Good afternoon and welcome to the regular meeting of the City of Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. Roll call please. Vice Chair Burns. Present. Commissioner Devine. Here. Commissioner Garcevanian is absent. Ex officio Jaburian. Present. Commissioner Tostian. Present. Ex officio Yagayan. Here. Chair Miller. Present. Thank you, Ms. Hildago. Next item on the agenda, please. At 1A, report regarding the posting of the agenda. The agenda for the May 13, 2013 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside of City Hall on or before May 10, 2013. Item 2, introductions and presentations at A, Women's Leadership and History. Women's Leadership, Terry Olivas de la O, and Infini and de la O, Family Success by Design. Thank you, Ms. Hidalgo. With May being uh, Women's Leadership and History Month, I would like to welcome Terry Olivia de la O, CEO of Family Success by Design, and her daughter, Infini Nicole, with us today to speak about women's leadership. Ms. Oliva Stelao, an occupational therapist practitioner for over 30 years, honored in 2009 with the American Occupational Therapy Roster of Honor, one of only 31 recipients in the nation, has dedicated her work in advocacy for those with physical and mental health needs. Mentoring and volunteerism are a huge part of Ms. Oliva, uh, Oliva Stelao's life and work. In 2003, she, she founded the first Young Latino Men's Conference in the state of California to foster self-esteem and awareness in young Latino males through education and mentorship. In 2009, she co-founded the Black and Brown Young Men's Summit to address bringing young men together in celebration of culture and education to promote understanding and successful lives with unity. And in 2010, she co-founded with her daughter, Infini, the, the Women's Summit, the Young Women's Summit, to address the need of ending bullying at a community, state, and national level. Their one-day summit is designed to empower young women to welcome leaders of the commun communities to engage in learning tools to proactively and successfully address prevention and intervention of all types of bullying. Infini was bullied from elementary to high school, and now as a senior at Monrovia High, she rallied her peers and teachers to develop the first anti-bully club in her school. Welcome, and thank you for being here with us. I'd like to come up. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank the chair, the vice chair, and the commissioners for allowing us to come and speak to you today briefly about um, our work and our strong belief in women's leadership and how we can move ourselves forward with the strong assistance of I feel men must be part of it as we move forward as well. So we did a slide presentation for you, and at any time, um, if you want slides or, or further follow-up, we would be welcome to send them to you. So you would know. I'm the worst at technology, I will admit. And it's good seeing you again, too, Commissioner DeVette. Thank you. That one? Maybe I'll just look over at you and then. Sure. Cool. So the reason we started what we started, I've actually been addressing bullying for over 20 years um, in the state of California. And unfortunately, we're in an epidemic state nationally and globally um, with young people. And unfortunately, the demographics are increasing between young women are the highest rate for increased bullying one-on-one. -on -one. And at 15, um, we are watching a show, which you'll go into real quickly when we move forward. And it just brought home a lot of things of why I not only needed to address the issues of education, health, wellness, and also financial literacy with the young men to but work with young women. In the state of California, we are blessed in that we have so many events for young women. Unfortunately, why I went 11 years ago working with young men is because our young men have fallen through, and not just our Latino young men, but men in general, um, from the ages of 10 to 17, education-wise. And we've always addressed bullying from every program that I work with to stop, primarily because I work with young women who are in gangs. That's how I started out. So as I share with my young women, um, it's interestingly enough, I am a domestic violence survivor, and I swore my second round of being in a situation that if I survived the situation, that I would make a difference. That was 33 years ago. Since then, I've had the ability and the blessing to make changes. One of the blessings was my daughter, who I not only wanted to have her grow as a leader and to work with other individuals, but just to let individuals know in the community that we're there for them. And as a survivor that um, 
I kind of like have gone beyond the boundaries and the stereotypes, which is pretty exciting. So we'll do the next slide. So that just goes through why I started doing it as a parent and also as a clinician, how occupational therapy became involved. I've been a clinician for 30 years as a COTA, which is Certified Occupational Therapy Assistant. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I'm the biggest cheerleader. Um, but at the same time, I had to realize that at seven when my daughter came to me and said, Mom, I want to commit suicide at age seven, I was like, okay, I'm working with children that are saying, and now my daughter is facing the same issue. How can we address this realistically? Fortunately, in my OT family and in the community as an all and as a leader that can move forward and get people empowered to assist me, we were able to make move forward on addressing the issue proactively. We're known across globally, thank goodness, no longer just in California, which is pretty exciting. Um, Family Success by Design is known for the one of a kind in the nation, working with Latino young men. Our nonprofit is neither ethnic nor gender specific. I want to really emphasize that. And what I'm excited about is the past five years we've had every young man attend from literally every ethnicity and it's amazing to see that bringing young men from a diverse, from very um, affluent neighborhoods, A students who un understandably don't always have the best communication skills um, to come together and unite that day and develop skills to further their education and know that if they're incarcerated, which our young men are, they have a six month at Sunbirth Youth Academy, that that's not who they are, that they can make a difference. And I'm very adamant that women and young women are part of this day's event as volunteers. They don't get the food for the young man, as I say culturally, we don't do that. But we make sure the young men know that we're there to support them, but we're not there to do everything for them. We definitely have goals that we address in the conference, and those goals are designed by our young men to make sure that they do follow through daily. Sorry. We're going to go to the next one. All right. The fun part of this is we do an art project during the day. So how does that tie into our vision overall with the anti-bullying and the things we address with the young man and moving forward? These two young men were rivals at different schools. And when you look on their face, that's true. When they were told they had to sit by each other, they're like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. The fun part is, in the very end, is they could not, they did not want to leave. They didn't want to leave each other, and they developed skills and building, and that's where the occupational therapy comes in. We design a day for the kids to have fun, but meaningful fun. So the art project is a promise to themselves and their mentors that we have involved to ensure that they will get better grades, stop fighting, attend school every day. And that's one of our mentors, one of our sponsors, our largest um, corporate sponsor that's been involved with us for 10 years is the Walt Disney Company, and we're really blessed to have them. And I feel that the gentleman is um, that I go to and, and discuss things with, he's my mentor. So not only do I have wonderful women who are my mentors, but I also try and grow because I don't always know what guys and boys are thinking. And Vinny and I are like, okay, well, maybe we're on the right track. So it's always we try and instill leadership skills, not just in the young women, but also our young men. And we do peer mentoring, um, which is real exciting. Again, at the table, those, those young men were so um, really tunely listening to that. And I was so excited they got that photo because the young man, again, at Sunbirth Youth Academy, if they don't make it through that, six months of training, then they usually, I'm sorry to say, is they end up either incarcerated or worse yet, dead. So we've been involved, they've been involved with us for four years and every year we, we um, sponsor 50 young men. Then just this year we got asked to go back in February to speak to 100 young men. And I teach the young men respect of women, young women and women. And then what they're out is this kind of we call slinging kind of stuff they do and this attitude that that's not allowed around women at all. So I'm very clear with them and I give them very expressive tools. And that just shows some of the things that we address when we're having the event. Oh, okay. So the reason that we decided to start the Young Women's Summit was after me being bullied and hearing other stories of young women also being bullied by other young women. Um, my story includes, um, at one point, I was surrounded by seven girls and screamed at and yelled at. and. 
Um, I've been called names by girls because I got in a relationship with a guy that they wanted. Um, and that went on for months and months. And so I got through it, and um, now I just want to help other young women. If they're having the same issues or if they're bullying, I want them to stop the bullying or be able to get through their journey like I did. So um, at the Young Women's Summit, we t try to teach the girls um, respect of self and others. So one of the main things that we work on is um, etiquette, sitting at a table and being able to know what fork you start with, what spoon you, you end with. Um, so we focus a lot on manners. So our first rally that we ever did was at my old high school. I'm now in college. I'm a freshman in college. Um, so the bullying at my high school is really apparent between boys and boys and girls and boys. Um, so we had ABC7 News there, and it was really impactful in my high school, and you can definitely tell that it made a difference. So the slogan that we came up with is don't fight, hug tight, because we're both really big huggers, and we feel that to support others, you need to embrace them and hug them. And so on the Occupational Therapy Global Day of Service and Awareness, we packed um, packages for soldiers, so they would send us a list of what they wanted, and then we pack it for them. So we have cup of soup there. We had bags and bags of Taco Bell taco sauce because they really wanted that. And the reason we do that, so it ties into why we do it, is we really show that the young women that there's, they don't deserve entitlement, that there should not be entitlement, that they should learn how to give back to their community. So part of that um, Young Women's Summit is also giving back to the community because most of the girls are sponsored to come to the event. They could be in foster care, they can be in the juvenile justice system, or they can be doing really good in school, but they're just being bullied. And I shouldn't say just, that they're just, there's things going on that they shouldn't be um, dealt with. So we also try and encourage service. Oh, I'll talk about that. <laughs> the other part that we're um, trying to, and it's, it's more like an occupational therapy thing is, the biggest thing is noting why is occupational therapy so important. So when we did the rally with 1,400 kids and 200 adults, and we did this in three days, put it together, we meaning our organization that is 100% volunteer based. I don't get paid. Um, my payment is not having to go to funerals and not having to go to juvenile hall with to see the kids. So we do an outcome data study, and that's been an awesome process because I work with my volunteers who also want to be OTs, so I'm encouraging them. Um, I had two young women who came to me who were also of domestic violence situation, and I didn't tell them my story, but the blessing was is being part of it, one just graduated last week from OT school in Chicago. So there's ways of giving back that we try to, um, like I said, and when I started is that I'm a big OT fan, so you'll see why that bring that in. So the two high schools that we just recently worked with, or middle schools, sorry, um, it's Clifton Middle School and Lawrence Middle School. Uh, we went in and we did a rally for Clifton. It was really needed. The principal asked us to come in. We did the, a big rally. Everybody loved it. And then we set up an anti-bullying club for the school so all the peers could come. And right now I was told that there's over 50 members now in the club out of 800 full students. Um, so Lawrence Middle School was another rally that we did. Um, that was in front of 1,600. And that was very successful also. We did 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade. And it was a huge hit. And then we helped strengthen the club that was already existing. And now we've heard positive support from them too. In the community, we've also found out that there's many, there's a lot of bullying that's increasing amongst our disabled or our physically challenged individuals. We were, um, one of my colleagues, uh, Louis Arbat, had asked if we'd come in and develop a program. And when we come in, just as what we want to present to you, is we design the programs really tailored to each child's need or each individual's need. We just don't come in and say, okay, this is a template, do it, because we're all unique. We're all individuals, and the kids, we want to respect that. Um, these are our first group of children. We've been back twice already. We're supposed to go back for another follow-up. We designed tools for them to interact and to protect themselves so that they were being bullied or kids were coming to them, how they would stop that. And it was so amazing to see the kids were all quiet and they wouldn't smile. By the time we left again, it's like they, they wouldn't let us leave and they were showing us ways that they could stop the bullies from getting um, on them. There was two little girls that were twins that were just amazing and to see them empowered 
to realize that they had a voice, and even though they had difficulty in speaking, that they were able to do that on their own was just very heartwarming. So we have an excellent um, web designer and graphic artist and all that good stuff, so we got them together. And in occupational therapy, people say, well, OT gets people's jobs. And that's kind of like old school, I guess you'd say. We kind of look at the whole individual in different ways. But with the kids who ask, well, what does OT do with kids? The role of a, of a child is to learn to play. That's their occupation. And many of our children, young women, young boys, that is being taken away from them because of bullying. The highest incident of not going to school is because of bullying nationwide. In California, the statistics are growing. So we just wanted to pull out there to let people know is the kids do have a role, they do have an occupation, and play is one of them because texting and games is disassociating and disengaging our kids from society. We also wanted to quickly bring up that we don't just address youth, young people, children and youth. We also get many, many emails and calls for workplace bullying. Sadly, I was also um, part of that about six years ago by four women. So my goal when I, when I work with young women, I always say, I want to work with young women so that they're, what? She wants to work with young women so that the young women don't turn into mean women as they grow up. Because it happens, and we see it, and it's very discouraging. And I always also say to my young men, I don't want you boys to turn into me men because you know what happens, and this is not good, so we need to change. But most definitely is I want young women to learn that they have the support system and that they'll be embraced. And in many cases, when we go to different situations or events, um, it's brought to my attention by the young women. I see what you mean. So I say, well, then how are you going to address that? And they're always like with a smile. And I said, exactly. Don't care what they say, don't care what they look, maybe it's something that they're thinking, it's a face that they're making, but it doesn't mean it's a personal. So we've developed tools for parents. We've developed tools for children. We have handouts that we give them. We ask them to put them in their notebooks, not their lockers. So they do put them with them and it gives them basically seven tools. And we've really, when we, especially with the Cleft Palette program, working with the single mommies, um, many who have been in domestic violence situations is, they don't always feel they have a voice, so when we write things out for them and just talk to individuals and not be afraid of the principals or school boards, um, they've come back to share with us in our second meeting that it really made a huge difference. So we hope that we can continue to get out there and we're not exclusive. I totally believe that we work with communities. Um, we're not the know-alls, thank goodness. So it, it gives us the opportunity to meet with many other organizations, which is amazing as well. And I'm a very firm believer that occupational therapy does make the difference against bullying. We just found out from our national conference and after research that our organization is blessed. We are the only one in the United States that is addressing bullying. And my hope is that more of my fellow practitioners, researchers, and educators will get out there and work with our young people because we are the forefront and we know mental health. And we have so many tools to give to our kids and our families. So I feel Young women to women, leadership, the journey will continue together. And that's what I feel tonight as we're here. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any comments? Yes, Commissioner Devine. Well, I, um, I was privileged to, to go to your women's young, what was it, young women's summit. And I was very impressed. I went for two reasons. Number one, I went because it was young girls. Number two, because I'm uh, on a Bully Me Not coalition here in Glendale. So I wanted to see exactly what you were doing about bullying and what kind of programs you had in, in uh, your uh, organization. Um, I was very impressed because you had uh, Mayor Marianne Lotz there. You get um, uh, support from your local government for that summit, which I thought was really terrific. Um, the girls were engaged in, uh, in critical thinking. Uh, they, were, um, they had to um, uh, talk about ways of stopping the bullying and, and uh, some of the young girls in the criminal justice system were um, uh, really compelling in what they've gone through and what they're trying to do with their lives. I especially loved the etiquette part and uh, I wanted to bring that back to the commission for our Camp Rosie because um, that really impressed me. And a lot of the girls told me that I sat with because they were, this was wonderful because you made us sit, the adults sat with different groups of girls, not just the same ones all, all day. And um, 
uh, uh, many of them, uh, you know, were, were learning it and they were, they were enjoying it a lot, but the girls in the criminal justice system had, had stories that we couldn't believe. Uh, but I, I totally admire what you're doing, and uh, uh, maybe one day we can arrange for you to come to Glendale to do a, a some sort of a program. And I know, especially uh, with Infini, that the ki the girls there listen to your story, and to the other young lady's story with uh, uh, pure, undivided attention. I mean, they were wrapped. I mean, they they could not uh, they weren't thinking of anything else but what you were saying, and that was very very good. Very good. So I appreciate what you're doing, and I thought that summit was wonderful. Thank you. For the feedback. Appreciate it. Any other comments? Well, I wanted to thank you come to, for coming here on behalf of the commission, both you and your daughter, Infany. Infany, you're going to occupational therapy school. Is that correct? Yeah. As a fellow occupational therapist, I am wholly support the work that you are doing with our younger population. I've followed your career for many years, and like you said, you do have national presence. Long before I was back in Glendale in California, I knew about Terry De La O and the work you were doing on bullying. Um, a couple of, I do have a couple of comments, but I'll start first with a question. Just for our viewing audience, could you actually just give some quick definitions of what the actual term bullying is? Um, it's saying or doing something over and over again to have power over another person. Great. Did you want to add anything? Or? No. Great. Straightforward. Well, thank you for that. I also, um, I also, I'm pleased to know that Commissioner Devine attended that summit. As you know, I was on my way to attend that summit, but I was evacuated the evening before with the fires. So, um, and I did not realize the fires were actually as close to my home until I saw the firemen on the hill the next day when I walked outside. Um, the other thing that I wanted to just do with us in terms of continuing the dialogue and perhaps plant the seeds as well as echo some of the sentiments of Commissioner Devine is, is to really, Anthony, have you really continue the dialogue with us? I think you could be quite crucial and critical uh, as a speaker in our Camp Rosie. While we don't specifically set the agenda, it's been set for a long time. I think that in working with our city staff, we could look at where there really is room for this very important topic. So I know that I'll see you again, I'm sure sooner rather than later, and we'll continue the dialogue and, and go forth with that. I also, in terms of thinking larger, because we in Glendale have had many issues of bullying that have resulted in some, some very negative and sad endings. Um, as I know, student ex officio uh, Yegian could speak to that even at her uh, previous or former high school. I think that um, it would be the time for us to really join forces beyond just the city of Glendale would really be um, welcome. And so I thought you might want to know that in the district you live, the city of Pasadena and the city of Glendale both have commissions on the status of women. We as a commission are looking perhaps what we may do that has a joint effort with Pasadena and perhaps what you um, speak about and the work that's been done in each of our respective cities is something where we can pull together as well. So that's, uh, there's so many people that have been doing this for a very long time. And so it would really just be us continuing the dialogue and see how we could reach out beyond our borders of Glendale. Chair. Yes. I have another question for you. On the slide presentation, there was one uh, where you had the young men and they had, were using their palm prints. Was that um, a pledge uh, that you were talking about? Uh, or is that, uh, was that, we have a program that the commission sponsors in our schools from uh, elementary to high school called Hand, Hands and Words Are Not For Hurting. And the kids make their palm print and then they take a pledge to not hurt themselves with their hands or their words or others, hurt themselves or others. Uh, is that what that was all about? Because I thought, wow, there's our, you know, the program. The actual term started with an artist um, 10 years ago, and it's called Andanos Lomano, and it means hand over hand. And so what ours is, it's definitely, as Infinity indicated, as our whole role is respect of self and others. So definitely it is a respect of the mentor and it is a respect of self. 
and so they write a pledge to themselves. Do they put their hands together? They or? can. I try not to make them. I try, you know, the mommy right. said, tries not to tell uh -huh. them what to do. Uh -huh. So I usually ask, but I ask the mentor's hand to make sure that it's very prevalent, uh -huh. and then to have the young man's hand next to it. But some have done hand over hand. Any, did you have any comments? Okay. Um, I was just wondering, with the work that you do, do you work with, are you f familiar with Adelante Mujer? Mm -hmm. Do you guys work with them? I actually was on the board of Adelante Mujer oh, several, okay. several years ago. Um, I've been involved with them since basically two years after the inception with Diane Medina. Mm -hmm. So um, saying that, I brought young women and actually got migrant education involved. I was the one that stirred that pot and got it going, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I branched off, and I'll be really honest with everyone, is my passion is I share with Infinity She Smiles. It's difficult sometimes to work with young women, and I think because I worked with such a severe population um, that I've had guns, knives, and fists pulled at me literally. And so I'm here to say, you know, I survived it. The girls changed. One of the programs is we took them to them to the conference for six years in a row. I would pick certain girls. Um, our summit is totally different from Alente because we only want it small, as you had witnessed. We only want it between 50 and 60 young women because in occupational therapy it's more individualized. We don't address careers per se. We encourage that you can get a career, but the whole focus is on mental health and self-efficacy and growing. Um, still give to Alente as much as I can the career of OT, try and encourage other OTs to go and speak because um, we're limited in ethnic groups, I guess you'd say, that are populated. So, yeah, so I've heard of them. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming today to the City of Glendale to present on this very important topic, and we look forward to continuing the dialogue. Thank you, Chair. And Infinity had made some ribbons, and if she can just, she'll give out the ribbons here and she can pass them. And we also brought the Animal programs for later on for you guys to have and to look through as well for the boys conference, because even though it's November 9th, that's going to come fast. <laughs> so thanks once again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, please. Item three, oral comment. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Time is limited to an amount to be set by the chair. The commission may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or discussion. Staff may refer the matter to the proper department for investigation and report. We have one speaker, Elizabeth Sadlon with Girls on the Run, who's here to speak with the commission. How much time would you like to set, Madam Chair? Uh, each speaker is allowed five minutes. Perfect. Thank you so much. I am here to, on behalf of these fabulous girls, to say thank you to the commission for supporting the spring season of Girls on the Run. I'm Elizabeth Sadlon. I'm a board member of Girls on the Run of Los Angeles County. And the girls wanted to send along these photos and um, thank you cards for each of you. Um, so I'm pass these around. <laughs> for you. And I also brought along a few T-shirts with your um, commission logo on them. This is our spring season. You will not miss us. There is no doubt. When we have 600 of these running around the Rose Bowl next Sunday, you will find us. Mm -hmm. And um, after I was here with you um, earlier in our season when we were um, in the draft phase of articulating our sponsorship um, policy, Afterward, the um, committee decided that the um, sponsorship level of $2,500 that you gave was going to be a t-shirt um, sponsorship. So there you are. We um, have the uh, logo for you, and I will um, share these. If others want t-shirts, I would be happy to get them for you. Let me know the size that you'd like. Uh, so I will leave this you as well. Can we tell you our size privately? certainly can and we're happy about any size. I'll see you Sunday. I'm really excited to see you Sunday and I'd love to wear a t-shirt but 
Excellent. Yeah, so see if one of these is for you, and if not, we can get one that morning. Our um, 5K is the culmination of the 12-week um, program. The girls have gotten together twice a week after school with their volunteer coaches. They have gone through a um, series of lessons about taking good care of themselves, being good friends, and right now are in the midst of their community service projects. I just came directly from a practice where the girls were posting signs all over their school as part of an Operation Beautiful activity where they are um, uh, posting all great affirmations about, like imagine walking into a bathroom looking at the mirror and seeing a sign that says, you are beautiful just the way you are. Um, those kinds of signs all over the school. So we were having a great time with that. Um, so Sunday at the Rose Bowl, um, this Sunday the 19th, We'll have about a 1,000 people coming together to celebrate with the girls their accomplishment of this season. And would love to have, in addition to Commissioner Miller joining us, you'll be, I understand you're going to be doing the medal makers, right? So you'll be putting the medals over the girls' necks as they come across the finish line. One of the most exciting um, <laughs> jobs in the world. It's one of my favorites. Um, we also, um, with your sponsorship, would be very happy for you to participate as walker runners. Um, and so if anybody, would like to participate in that way, we can still sign you up till Wednesday, and I'm happy to get that information and get you all official. Um, and the girls each get partnered with an adult walking, running buddy. They get to complete the 5K at their own pace, which is a terrific, fun way to go. Um, just We ran some really quick preliminary numbers so that you know that the breadth of the impact, both the, the smiling faces and the personalized notes. And at Edison, we had 20 girls on this powerful team. And we also had 15 girls at Cerritos, and for our first season at Roosevelt had 13 girls. So across just South Glendale, the three teams we had there, we had 48 girls, 42 of whom received financial assistance. So it's really because of the generosity of partners like the commission that we're able to do that. And uh, we'll be really excited to be with the girls on Sunday celebrating their accomplishments. Um, and would love for any of you to join us who can. And anybody who may be watching tonight, um, registration is open online until Wednesday at gotrlosangeles.org. Um, so that's all I've got. What Happy time? to answer questions, of course. Yes. Yes. What time, Elizabeth? Oh, what time? Oh, what time? Yeah, um, the Rose Bowl. We're registering at 7, and the walk run begins at 8.30. And if you wanted to go with a girl, our girls complete in the 5K anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes or so. Plenty of time to still have your Sunday to do other fun things, too. Any other questions? And uh, for any of the commissioners that would like to attend, will you be providing a follow-up email for us in terms of deep? Like, will we, to, will yeah. we know where to go? Yes. So um, I, I know that you'll be coming. Would you like me to send something to Christine tonight with all that information so she can send it to everyone? Or? Well, you can send it to Teresa. Teresa, great. And we, I got your email today. Yeah. Perfect. That would be great. I'm happy to do that so everyone has it and we can be in touch. Thank you. These are wonderful. These are wonderful. And um, I yes, also please. love the idea of those affirmations in the bathrooms. That's a great idea. Uh, Crescenta Valley High School tried doing that a few years ago. Oh, really? It, it was great whenever you walked in there to see those as a reminder. Nice surprise. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, terrific. Thank you. Thank really you. Sincere thank you to all of you. Have a good evening. Are there, seeing that there are no other speakers, this item is closed. Um, and if we could go to the next item on the agenda, please. Next item is item four, consent items at A, approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting held on March 18, 2013. Are there any changes that the commission would like made to the minutes, or is there a motion to, pro to approve the minutes as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? And we have a second. Seeing that we're all unanimous, you will have one abstention because Commissioner Devine was not here unless she's reviewed the minutes. I have not. Okay. She has not. So we have one abstention and seeing that we're unanimous. Um, next item on the agenda. Item 5, business agenda, A, action items. At 1, consideration and discussion of sponsorship requests for the 3E event. At A is in motion providing direction regarding the sponsorship request. Would you like a report? Yes, Ms. Alexania, if you could provide a brief report on this matter, please. Sure. Commissioner received a request, staff received a request from to the commission for um, sponsorship for an event called 3E event from Heal Within. 
Uh, the three event is an event to empower women where they will gain insight through guided visualization, experience a healing drum cycle, drop emotional weight and relieve stress, network with female leaders and visionaries, and see presentations from leading voices in female empowerment. Heal Within is a local uh, business offering hypnotherapy, hypnomassage, medical massage support and group workshops and other therapeutical and uh, empowering programs. The event will um, be on June 15th at the Castaway in Burbank. Uh, the focus demographics for the event as um, submitted in the sponsorship request is women and girls 16 years and over and domestic violence victims. Uh, there's an exhibit attached to the report uh, which breaks down the sponsor, uh, which breaks down the different sponsor opportunities. Um, one is a monetary sponsor uh, at $2,500, which is an angel, angel sponsor, $1,500, which is a vision sponsor, $750 sponsor, which is a heart sponsor, and a $450 sponsor, which is a friend sponsor. There's also an opportunity for a vendor sponsor at $175, which is an exhibit table at the event. And also another opportunity would be an ad sponsor. And there's a correction to the report. Um, I apologize that there's a typo. So it's $150 for a full page ad, um, $100 for a half page ad, $75 for a quarter page ad, or $50 for a business card ad. Um, according to the sponsor request, some of the funds will be allocated toward covering the admission for women who, who would otherwise not be able to attend, specifically women selected from the YWCA Domestic Abuse Shelter and Women Veterans. I believe we have uh, Lisa Bubari here if Commission has any questions or specific questions about the type of sponsorship um, that they are requesting. So the report that's being provided on this request is coming from you, is coming, has come to us ahead of time, and we're to go ahead and have a discussion on it, or do we have the speaker come to the podium, the requester? You can proceed either, either Great. way. Any comments? Well, I have some questions. For okay. We have questions for you. Lisa. Good evening. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Yes, how may I? Um, yes. Uh, can you give us an idea of how uh, the event is going to be run? Is there lunch included? Uh, and, and what is the cost per person? Okay. Uh, registration is approximately 8.30 in the morning. The program starts at 9 o'clock. Our welcoming presentation, welcoming remarks will be with Senator Carol Liu. And then uh, after uh, we have our spe first presenter speaker, Sophie Keller will be here. And uh, after Sophie Keller, we have a healing circle going on. And uh, lunch will be included. It's going to be a buffet style. Castaways is providing an incredible lunch for us. Um, at the entire time, there will be coffee also. And uh, after that, uh, we are planning on having our next speaker, which is Lee's, uh, I'm sorry, during lunch, we have our keynote speaker. And that is from our community, a uh, very well-known CEO, uh, Linda Loray is going to be speaking. And uh, Linda is uh, CEO and branding uh, branding executive of Giorgio Beverly Hills, if you remember Giorgio perfumes with the yellow lines and everything. Mm -hmm. She's going to be speaking not only about branding and being an executive and a high-powered woman, but who we are as women and the challenges that we overcome. Uh, let me backtrack. Sophie T uh, Keller is a very well-known uh, and famous R author on the way of happiness and how to be happy internally and externally. Then after our keynote speaker, we have our next presenter, who's going to be Liz Merz, um, Silva Mirzoyan. And uh, Silva is uh, very well known within the community. She has been uh, an author and she promotes uh, working with the children and bullying, but that day it's going to be about women empowering and jump-starting their life, not only as women, but as executives and workers within the community and community at large. Then we will have a, a guided visualization, a healing 
what we call it a healing drum circle is just a um, it's time for us to play and let go and uh, create we have drums and drummers who are going to be there and that's going to we're going to just enjoy a drum circle we're going to have to bring drums we're bringing drums and everyone is going to have a musical instrument so that's going to be a joyful time and afterwards uh, I'm the last closing remarks that I'm going to be doing and uh, empowering women and the day is significant because it is not about like like any other events that we have within our community that we have gone to. We're changing and cor incorporating the corporate world with the holistic internal world of who we are as women, the spirit of a woman. And with that said, what we are trying to do is say, it's not about our labels, it's not about awards that we receive and being uh, recognized, but it's being rewarded as who we are as a woman and uh, children of God, and just be who we are and accept friendship. So that's the closure. The day of additional questions. Yeah, we're supposed to end at four o'clock. So there is lunch. The price is one thirty-five per person, or two hundred for two. We did have a mother's special going on. Okay. Okay. Right there. I, Do I, we have m more questions? Well, I just was laughing when she was telling describing this because we just were recently on a trip and one of the first stops we made we had the drummer from the Grateful Dead and he did exactly that a drumming spiritual um, sing you know drum along yes. and it really is it's it's a lot it's of fun quite and it's empowering yes, if yeah. you have ever been in a healing yes. drum circle never, it's never, must have been some kind of trip I know, it, was fabulous. Yes. it is a trip yeah <laughs> I've, I've seen him before too okay, um, okay. Did you have other questions, Commissioner um, Devine? If we decide to, yes. I noticed on one of uh, one of the items that, uh, well, that you said in the description that um, some of the money, the funds would be allocated towards covering admission for women who otherwise are unable to attend, specifically uh, domestic violence uh, uh, victims, uh, women veterans. Possibly homeless from the from Asensia, maybe some of them would come. I yes. have not gone towards Asensia. It was just there, and ARS may have one or two, it, and it, okay. those are the ones that it's not being publicized. And whoever is my sponsor, it's only going to my sponsors for them to know about it. Correct. Well, what, what my question is? Yes. May, my question is: Is there a way that if this commission allocates funds for your project, can we specify that we want our funds to go for these women that could not otherwise afford it? Definitely. Definitely, I'd be more than happy to. And when we do that, I'll be more than happy to specifically specify that all the funds came from the status of commission. Yes. Do we do we have any commissioner or vice chair Burns? Do you have any questions? <laughs> Not right now. I have a couple of questions. I want to first hear, if I may, um, historically from the city. Can you, uh, just in terms of, thank you for breaking down what the different sp sponsorships were with your question. My question goes to, historically, we are a nonprofit organization. We are not the CDGB. Heal Within is for profit. Correct. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about that, Ms. Farbetchian, what sure. that means to us? Sure, Chair Miller, Miller um, Commissioners. The, uh, this commission is unique in that um, you are the only commission that does uh, independent fundraising, and the intent behind the fundraising is to sponsor the programs uh, for your own programmatic purposes. You have had in the past requests from other nonprofit agencies where the, um, where the uh, uh, mission has been similar to that of the commission, and the commission has chosen to sponsor those events. But historically, there has not been an effort on the part of this commission to sponsor either individual um, uh, uh, for-profit organizations or for-profit events. Um, that really is more of a policy decision that needs to be directed by the City Council. So if there was an, an effort on the part of the Commission to move in that direction, we would have to seek Council direction first. 
Okay, and it, even now, moving aside the different level of sponsorships, if we, um, would it change in terms of seeking council decision if, for example, the YWCA came before this commission and asked for us to sponsor people to attend this conference? Sure, and at that point in, in determining the, uh, the need of the, um, the nonprofit, the number of people who are served by the sponsorship, the, the level of sponsorship, um, if you found that it was worthwhile to send, uh, that the benefit and the number of people you were able to reach with the sponsorship warranted that, then um, it would be a nonprofit request, a nonprofit organization submitting the request, and so therefore you'd be in a different position to, to evaluate that decision. Now, my question for you, Lisa, is in terms of the vendor sponsorship, yes, who, what are some of the names of other the, the other vendors that you have that are vendors? The vendor well, table. Allow me to explain one thing. Every single sponsorship level uh, is, uh, we're providing a table for them if they would like to have a vendor table. So for every level of sponsorship, even as the friend, which is at the 450, they have a table they can, if they choose to, they can bring all their brochures and everything, place it over there, promote themselves, and uh, every, your logo, or the logo of the sponsor is on our website and there is a link to their uh, website and we're also promoting it on our Facebook. So I, I think what my question is really going to, I'm trying to right accomplish now, two the things. The vendors that we have, they are not nonprofit or city people. The people who are coming at this moment are more of um, who are my vendors? They're more sellers than other than the sponsors because I do have an attorney, Noel Halaby, law offices of Noel Halaby, who specializes in uh, working with women and she is certified in the marriage and family. Mm -hmm. She's going to be having a table of her own and she's going to be promoting <laughs> her business and everything for marriage and divorce and everything else. So there Not are done. sponsors who are coming specifically for their table. Business Life is having a table of his own. So there are sponsors that we are already supporting and I, bringing their brochures. And I realize there's other questions on the dais, but I'd sure. just like to continue on this thought because I really I want to understand this as we get forth to so for example and thank you for that information yes do you have a sponsorship category for nonprofits such as us if we want see in our role some of the things in which you've described you're trying to accomplish um, are in terms of elevating women and such have themes that the Commission also addresses so if we were to try to match those up in any way, and I'm also asking this question of you, Lucy, uh, Ms. Varpechian. If we were to follow the role of advocacy, Correct. which is, um, and we were to look at a nonprofit, and, and we were to look at having our materials there or something in that way, okay. is there a fee for nonprofit sponsors that is different than, than these for-profit table? I had not specific. Uh, I had not specified anything for nonprofits because no one had come. And it, I realize level. this is okay. the first time you're doing this, but my I realize this, and I just would wonder if that might be something you might consider. Well, because May 15, the for the vendors the fee for the vendorship is at 250. I'd be more than happy to honor at the 175 for the nonprofits. Okay. That's. And the same goes if they do come as the vendor, we are putting them. My intention for your support, the support of the commission, was because it's a women's event and the collaboration would put a stamp, let's put it that way, validate that we are working in collaboration for the same theme and mission. Commissioner Devon. Thank you. Um, yes. I think where we're, where we're having a kind what of a is, glitch what is here. The, yes. What is I, I the think, question? <laughs> yes, I think, yeah. the, I think the bottom line here is what are your, what 
where are the funds that you are raising going towards? Because since we are a nonprofit, okay, and we, um, you know, and we're giving you, if we give you a sponsorship, what are you going to do? Like, if we don't specify it's for these women, what are you doing? This is going to make money, right? This is a fund. I mean, you're not going to break. Well, it's the like going to it. Anthony Robbins. Yeah, it's so not going anywhere. If you go to deep, uh, I'm just saying there are so many organizations people go for empowerment that is not a nonprofit organization. When we go to, uh, let's say, the, the Women's Commission and where Mariah Shriver is, it is a non nonprofit. It is for empowerment of women. So where does the money go? It goes towards some of the speakers. It also goes uh, towards we are creating a healing retreat that it's going to be in August, end of August, and that's going to be a three-day retreat for more empowerment individual that it's going to cover a part of the ladies who are going to be coming here that cannot afford, and we're asking for the parts of the donation. If you would like to donate own and sponsor and support us for a specific thing, that's fine. If there's also another choice, which actually my intention was not so much monetary for your support, it was the support of the commission of saying, yes, we would like to be a supporter to promote it and validate it, and just to have you even in a, not only an ad in the program, but your logo is a support of what we are doing. And this will continue. It's not only the first year. This will continue. Mm -hmm. It's going to become bigger. We already have a huge thing going on to a point that KKLA wanted to interview us and find out. And that is big when KKLA comes to us. And Ohm Times is writing an or article. So it's truly not only business life, which is all business, downtown LA, which is the corporate people, it's also the other side of it. It's mentally, emotionally, physically. Mm -hmm. I Yes. Um, I think, Lisa, just again, if I may go to where the questions are going, there's no doubt that, that there's a there are circles of women that support that. I don't think this dialogue is about this at all. I, I'm trying, I think we as commissioners are all trying to understand how in the role that we're in we could look at this. So for example, my next question, Ms. Varpechian, is could you, could you maybe talk a little bit about the auditing and because I think we have really strict guidelines around any of the things that we sponsor. Um, sure, I can I can address that. Um, one of the th things that this commission lacks um, is the uh, staffing uh, ability and the authority to conduct any sort of an audit once a um, once funds are released to a, a for-profit um, agency. Generally, the information that we receive for, from nonprofits provides us with the ability to follow up and determine how those funds were used. Additionally, um, the events that the Commission has historically sponsored have been free to the community and open to the community so that anyone can attend without a condition of uh, paying a, an admission fee. Um, so those are the things that the Commission has participated in the in the past. As it relates to non-monetary, just um, just a, 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 a logo support, um, sponsorship at any level um, uh, for a for-profit business, I believe, still would require you to um, gain the, the prerequisite um, authorization from the city council. Um, the city, uh, the, the commission does not operate on its own. Um, you are, after all, representing the city of Glendale when you do that. And that function has really been one for the city council in the past. Um, and y your hands aren't tied at this point. If this is something that you'd like to pursue, um, you do have to take the step of taking a report to council, um, make a re making a recommendation that they, uh, that they support this event, and then allowing them the opportunity to um, to do that either, either in their capacity or to grant the commission the authority to do that. Um, but as it relates to what you're proposing and what you're discussing at this point, um, I don't believe that's something that you can do um, as has been discussed to now. 
Okay, let me make sure I understand this. Are you, are you, you, um... Let, let, let me, let me take a step okay. back. The issue about the vendor sponsor, mm -hmm. and I understand that to mean that there, that you can, um, a staff a table at the function. Again, if you feel that, um, that this is something where you would have, um, a, a great deal of exposure to the women that you would like to, uh, conduct outreach to, um, then that's something that you may consider. Um, <coughs> by way of example, for when, when the city sponsors cruise night, they have two levels of sponsorship for the um, for-profit and the non-profit um, vendors. Um, I believe there, there's no fee for the non-profit vendors um, to set up a table and to do outreach to the community. Um, but there is a fee for the for-profit vendors, naturally, because they're doing, that's part of their advertising, and they're trying to reach out to a certain demographic, whereas the nonprofits are providing a service. So as it relates to Cruise Night and, and the, the, the Parks Department, that's something that they um, have adopted as a policy. It's not to say that that's the same policy here. And if there's a, a different fee that you'd like to, to pay to staff a table and uh, attend a function where you believe that your dollars spent for that would warrant that, then that's something that I think that the Commission can consider. But that's not a sponsorship per se. That's just having um, a table where you could distribute in information. It's not the same as um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, being a, a co-sponsor or lending your name to the flyer as, um, as someone who is um, backing the event. Uh, what I'm trying, and we do have more questions on the dais, so I'll close with my last comment and come back. What I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to figure out what, if we, this is on our business agenda, and if we were to have a motion on this, I'm trying to figure out what that motion would be and to understand it within the parameters that that which we can function as a commission. So where, where my question goes is, as this report is written, any of the sponsorship levels would have to go before city council. Is that what you're indicating? With the exception of uh, staffing a, a table at the event. Or the ads. Or the ads. Wh which one would that be? That Pardon would be me? free. Or the ads. You could, you could sign up to purchase an ad in the book, um, or you could, uh, you could staff a table. At a cost or for free? Well, we can't dictate the cost. Sure. So that would be something that you'd have to consider um, in, in, in determining whether or not um, it, your your programmatic dollars that you've spent that you've worked so hard to earn is something that where you'd like to where you'd like to spend it. Commissioner Devine, would that then um, uh, preclude us from sponsoring? maybe two women or four women to attend the conference? I would advise that you have that request come to you from the agencies who are making the request um, because then you can determine whether or not that's, a, um, that, that's an organization you'd like to partner with and in fact provide that service. Yes, Vice Lisa, Chair Burns. Lisa, um, yes. All of a yes, sudden, Burns. I'm, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Vice Chair. We're, we're, we're rolling over some of our money, perhaps, into a, into a request yes. from, let's say, the YWCA to sponsor four people. Would that, is that what we're yes. talking about? Yes. Yes. Then it will be the YWCA. You're supporting the YWCA, not the 3E event. But does that get a little bit... Jumbled. Yes, we've already gone through that, and it really seems... it's not going to work. Okay. I've already had somebody else try, and... It just seems that trying to do that is, is going to recorded? mix is an awful live? lot of things up. Yes. I yes. beg your pardon? Yes. I just wanted to make sure that it, this is live. Oh, is it? Yes. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, new for May, we're yeah. not live. <laughs> Not like, but <laughs> yes. what I'm trying to say, I think you better just scratch that one. That that's not an idea. I think that would be helpful to anybody right. because well, we're going to get so know. mixed up with the, exactly. It's not proper accounting. It. So when we look next, Commissioner um, Tajtian, do you have anything to say, or are we ready to look at a motion on what? Do we feel like we have enough information to go to a motion on on? Well, I. 
Initially, I was somewhat conflicted about yes. the supporting the sponsorship, even though I, I support your efforts. Uh, but I am I was somewhat conflicted in, in light of what Ms. Farpetian has, has told us. Um, I think that uh, we should probably stay away from his sponsorship uh, until we get some uh, something definitive in the near future with respect to what we can do, what we can't do. But in light of what Ms. Farpetian said, I think that we should probably stay away from his sponsorship at this time. Do I have a motion? To state well, either you, way? Oh. Do we have to, on this business item, have a motion? Okay. If, if there's no action that the, the commission wishes to take, then no. Is it, is, in terms of um, what I'm indicating, if there's no motion, am I getting a unanimous read that at this point we would take no action? Well, we would ask for a motion. If there is none, then we would move forward. Okay. Well, that's what I... I would like to ask Lisa something. I'm getting yes. a, a feeling that it's important to you to have the commission in some way support you. Exactly. And the reason being not necessarily financial as it is saying to the community that this, that the, the Glendale Commission on the Status of Women is supporting this effort. I think where we're going to have a problem, and forgive me if I'm going to just wrap it up for myself, is the Heal Within is a for-profit business. And I understand that there's going to be it spread out all over the place, but I think that's where it comes down to. There maybe is a problem with us supporting a for-profit business I understand. Even though I just love everything about this, frankly. It's a, it's a wonderful event. I think it's going to be a great event. And Thank you. Uh, the words evoke, embrace, and evolve are just wonderful words. And each one, even the logo in itself, has a meaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which will be disclosed at the event. There will be a whole um, experience that it's going to be taking place that it's tying every single woman, and uh, it is incredible. It's going to be amazing and incredible for mothers and daughters to attend because what we're going to be doing, it's also connecting mothers and daughters and the chain of ev uh, event of all the way traditionally. And uh, okay, doesn't matter. Thank you very, You're thank welcome. you very much for coming here and for answering all of our questions. Now we have three alternatives under the report, um, and are we, as a commission, looking at alternative two? Ms. I need to, I need to move this towards a business. As I understand it, there's no motion to sponsor no. the event, and so therefore. So that's you, alternative two. The commission may choose not to sponsor. You don't need a motion to not sponsor. Okay. okay. You don't need a motion in the negative. Got yes. it. So That's do it. you have any last comments we... I, I do. I just want uh, Lisa to know that uh, uh, individually I will be supporting you and Thank this you. event. I think it sounds terrific. I hope you will be attending. I, I agree with uh, Vice Chair Burns. Thank you. It sounds really great and uh, good luck. Good Thank luck. you so much. We all wish you a great deal of luck and please know that our theme this year is also the spirit of the women. So we'll be sending you lots of good wishes for this. Thank you. In that and, spirit, thank and, you. And I, I would concur, and I did indicate to you earlier, I, I praise your efforts, uh, and I hope you have great success. Thank you so much. Okay. So if we could go to the next item on the agenda. Sure. Item 5A2, potential commission name change at a motion providing direction to staff regarding a potential commission name change. Huh. And can I have a can we have a brief report on this, Mrs. Sure. Alexander? On February 11th, Commission asked staff to bring back a report regarding the potential name change for the Commission on the Status of Women to the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls for the Commission to review and consider. Staff contacted the California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls to gather some history and background on the reasons for the name change at the state level. 
Staff was informed that the name change at the state level was mandated by a Senate bill number 1038. Um, I requested reports from the California Commission um, regarding the name change but have not received anything to date and was just told that it was um, mandated by the Senate bill. Uh, spoke to several people, including Chris Wagaman, the then acting executive director, Rebecca Blanton, the executive director, Bryn Sullivan, a Senate consultant, and lastly, Erica Martinez, the special assistant to John A. Perez, speaker of the California Assembly. Um, who stated over the phone that the change was a result of an effort to improve and refocus the state commission. Um, I was not able to find any reports online that I could refer to. Um, and that was the, the Senate Bill um, 1038 was the extent of um, the research that I was able to gather. Our current commission, although Girls is currently not part of the commission name, the commission does focus on the needs and issues of both women and girls. Uh, the commission does recognize girls in the community, promotes education on issues regarding, the, um, regarding matters involving the needs of girls, um, and provides programs like Camp Rosie that empower girls to achieve self-sufficiency and build self-esteem. Changing the commission name at the local level uh, for our city would require council action. Should the commission um, wish to request that, staff would take a report to city council. Um, the following are impacts that staff identified and it would basically be amending the municipal code on um, 2.38 commission on the status of women to include girls. Uh, revising the commission handbook, which includes commission procedural guidelines, and um, there would be uh, some costs. Staff estimated about $1,500 for ordering new business cards or a tablecloth or pens or any other um, things that the commission would normally be purchasing. So if there was a name change, we would have to spend some money for that. Uh, staff is seeking direction from commission regarding the poten potential name change. That okay. concludes my report, if you have any questions. Thank you. Do we have any comments on this item? Commissioner well, Devine? I think since I brought this up, I should, I should comment on this. Um, I think uh, the reason I did this was because, of course, the change in the state commission, the national, uh, uh, President Obama's commission is also called the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. And I think to be more compatible and to encompass all of our programs, uh, we, we, this would be a, I think, a good, a good change. Um, we have, we support, as we saw tonight, girls on the run. Uh, we do safe dating in the schools. Uh, we do so many pro, the palm cards, hands and words. All of those reach young girls. And uh, one of the first programs that this commission ever had was dealing with young girls. It wasn't women, it was young girls. And I think that after these, all of these years, I think it's time that we, we change the name. And I think if you look at um, uh, the bill, uh, Exhibit 1, and you, you see where they, uh, they say that um, they, want to, they want to provide specific issue areas for commission study and advocacy, such as educational needs of women and girls, and health and safety issues impacting women and girls. And that's what we do. That's exactly what we do. And so I think that the name of our commission um, uh, should, should be changed. And I, I'm just hoping that, uh, that, I can, that we can get support from the other commissioners. That's, those are my thoughts on the issue. <laughs> Any other comments? Well, I, I do have a comment. Commissioner Tashian. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, as you may recall, I seconded a motion to have a report prepared by staff with respect to the name change. I was specifically looking for justifiable reasons in order to make that name change. And um, a, unless someone could point to me the justifiable reasons, then I'm inclined not to support it, especially when there's $1,500 in costs. Um, I think $1,500 could be used in multiple areas so, that, we, uh, that, that we support, um, perhaps towards a better 
a program or a goal that we have. Uh, I'm just a little, I'm reluctant right now to go forward with this. Um, I think uh, Commission on a Status Woman implies girls. Um, I think our, when you, uh, Commissioner Devine, when you talk about um, the educational needs, needs of women and girls and health and safety issues impacting women and, women and girls, well, we do that anyway. And that's part of our commission. Um, the only thing I could think of is perhaps we could table this and bring it back for additional information. I don't think we need to do that. Uh, I just don't. Th I just think that the cost in uh, incurred in changing the name change could be used for better purposes. Uh, unless someone could change my mind, I'm inclined right now not not to support it. Perhaps I could get some input. Do you from have any comments, Vice Chairman? Not right now. Okay. This, my comments on this, um, I, this particular item when it was brought before us is not one that I have a specific stake one way or the other. I do echo um, Commissioner Tashian's thoughts and that I was looking for what compelling reason would we spend our time and our effort in, in terms of changing the name. I do think women implies girls, girls implies women. I do also know that um, we have a commissioner here who very much supports it, so I tried to start with that position, and I really got into what the state identified. And the, the one question I have around this is it looks to me like the state was so moved to change their name to increase their funding um, towards them or grants. Is, that, is my understanding correct? or? I did not, I mean, the, the people that I did talk to at the state level did not specifically state that, but um, I can't say that that's the reason that the bill was written, but what I was told is that it was as a result of an effort to improve and refocus the commission and to include okay. girls. I, I think they were going through a period uh, of um, uh, confusion. They were losing their funding and... Uh, uh, I think to make it uh, a little meatier, a little more important, a little bit uh, more encompassing, uh, that that's what brought about the name change. If it was about funding, then so be it. But I think the important thing is that um, this, this commission uh, does programs for girls. We had a summit for young girls, for young women. Um, it just it just seems a natural progression. The fifteen hundred dollars, the commission was just chastised at the CDBG because we don't spend our money. What do we do with our money? This is a perfect way to to um, to show the community and to show the the um, the politic the our city uh, government that uh, we are uh, thinking about what we're doing with our funds and we're using them to uh, for a good purpose. And I think um, I just every t I mentioned I have talked about this to a lot of people, a lot of women in the community, and they all think it's it's a great idea, because it is what we do. It is women and girls. It's not women and children. It's not women and young women. It's women and girls. And there's a difference between a woman and a girl, in my opinion. <laughs> do, do we have any opinions? <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's, um, you know, I, I just feel uh, pretty. Um, Commissioner Devine, if I ask. But go ahead. What, you know, we'll um, do what. Yes, Vice Chair Burns. I see your point completely. I worry that we should have, 10 years ago, called it the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. That would have made sense. We've sort of gone along for almost 10 years, leaving it at the commission, uh, the commission on the status of women. And I understand your point of view. I haven't heard a great number of women telling me that they think it's important that we add and girls. Um, I, I have to ask the rest of the commissioners, have we just, I haven't heard a great deal of anything that adding and girls is going to change anything that we do. 
Well, it so, won't, it won't change No, anything exactly. We so do, why, what, then? Because it, it's just informing the community and informing um, commissions across the state, people all over the state, that this is what we are. We are a commission on the status of women and girls. And I, you know, I also can see in terms of where the national uh, agenda has gone in the state, I could see your point on alignment, but on the other side, the only other commission in our district is the Commission on the Status of Women Pasadena. So I'm always looking for, um, you know, our alignment would be with the city. But I don't know that Pasadena does anything for girls. All the Commission on the Status of Women in Pasadena does a a resource guide. That's what they do. They don't do, as far as I know, a lot of programs for girls like we do. This commission is a standard bearer in this state for our programs with girls and women. We are we are. Uh, well known in the state. We're one of the best commissions in the state. So it, for us to compare ourselves with uh, Pasadena or Santa Monica or Los Angeles is, um, uh, you know, let's be progressive. Let's be the one that takes that step forward and says we are a commission for women and girls, and that's what we do. Uh, briefly. A comment on the other side. Yes, Commissioner Tashian. Thank you, Chair. I. Um, as, as you know, I was open to discussing this matter, and that's why I seconded it. Um, but I just wanted some feedback from the staff. And I understand your, your, your position, um, Commissioner Devine, and I respect your position. Uh, I just don't see how important it is to add the words and girls. And that's where I'm having um, some problems. Um, and so far, there's been nothing said, you know, that would justify me changing my position. Um, I think it implies girls. The, the minute we mention the Commission on the Status of Women, I'm thinking woman also implies girls and vice versa. So I, I'm just having problems uh, with adding the word and girls and how important that is. I just don't see uh, the significance of it at this time. And that's where my position is. And again, I, I respect your your viewpoints, and you and you know that. Oh, and like I said earlier, I, I was open to discussing this matter. I wanted it to be brought before this uh, before this commission. I wanted it to be discussed, uh, and it has been. And I, I think uh, right now my position is that I would not support it. Do you have any other comments, Vice Chair Burns, Commissioner Devine? Okay. So, do we? That's alternative two. Do we? Do, is there a move? Don't need there would be no move on this item. Okay. Don't need a motion. So we're going to go. To, thank you for the discussion, and it is something that, because there's no movement on it, it'll different time it could be revisited. Okay. All right. Um, next item on the agenda, please. 5B reports information only at one. Update on sexual assault awareness month activities. Could I have, could we have a uh, short <laughs> report on our activities? Yes, Chair Miller. Um, as we know, April was sexual assault awareness month. Um, in March, uh, the mayor and city council presented a proclamation for um, Sexual Assault Awareness Month and Denim Day, and Chair Miller accepted that on behalf of the commission. We did provide three uh, self-defense classes in, in April, and I do have a PowerPoint with pictures uh, from the self-defense class that uh, we hosted. Um, Chair Miller did attend one of the sessions at uh, Glendale Community College and welcome the, the women and girls. And there were 125 uh, duplicated women and girls in attendance in all three classes with the one held at the Glendale Police Department being the largest with 71 attendees. I got a lot of positive feedback from um, all the, the women and girls that attended um, with smiles on their face and a lot of them came back for the second and third class because they really wanted the practice. 
Nelson Neo was, was great. It was my first time actually being a part of, of the classes. I wasn't able to take it myself. I plan on doing it next year. But um, I have a lot of positive feedback, a lot of thank yous to the commission, and a lot of um, happy, happy women and girls, and, and a lot that were interested in taking more classes with Nelson. And, and as I said, he was great. Um, and a couple of pictures that, that I took at the, the different sessions that we held um, with, again, everybody, everybody loved it and, and was just thankful to the commission. With Denim Day, um, it was on April 24th, and the commission raised $1,118 that we will pass to um, Peace Over Violence. And so April was a busy month for the commission, and um, we were able to do a lot with Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Okay. Concludes my report. Thank you. Any, anybody want to comment at anything happened in your schools? For Denim Day that you're... Um, sorry. I know that the um, Glendale Community College's YWCA Club did a large Denim Day um, awareness campaign and had a booth um, set up at the, on the campus and passed out hundreds of buttons to anyone who wanted to learn about Denim Day. It's great. I actually wanted to make a comment about the self-defense classes. I did attend the... April 17th one, which was, I believe was the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the class. I think we need to sponsor this every single year. <laughs> uh, one class is just, one class is just, um, it's amazing. As long as you, at least two or one, whatever you go to, just go to one self-defense class. You learn a lot. Did you feel more safe? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Empowered? Everywhere I walk now, I just feel like I can take everybody on. <laughs> well, if you recall, last year we only had two. and um, This year we added one, so we're, and we added third, that April 17th. A third uh, class. And I think we weren't sure how that was going to work. Well, it sounds like it worked well. It worked. Um, I, uh, uh, Chair, I mean, I was, I was very, very happy that we added a third class and it turned out to have the largest turnout at the class. That I'm location seems to have, the Glendale Police Department location seems to have a really good turnout and this year with elections we weren't able to use that location more than once but maybe next year we could look into. Um, how, how many were at the community, the Adult Recreation Center? Do you recall? Um, you know we've always Off the top of my head I don't remember oh, okay. but okay. it was 20, 24, 25, and 30, in the 30s for the second class uh, with 71 the, being at, the but key. they, you know, these are duplicated numbers, so a lot, a, there was, there were yeah, few that attended three all times. three. That's, mm -hmm. right. That's right, yeah. And Nelson's great because he allows you to get, to have one-on-one -on -one sessions. He, he calls up everybody to, to go up there and practice with him. So um, it's great experience and great practice. Great. Any other, yes? One thing I'd like to comment is it would be great, even if we could add a fourth, which I know is a lot, but um, to have one closer to the Crescenta Valley area. Because I know a lot of the students that were hoping to come from Crescenta Valley High School couldn't get all the way out to Glendale, and we're hoping there was one closer. That's a good idea. Hmm. Okay, that's definitely something to consider as we go into the next year. That'll be words of wisdom for you to pass on <laughs> to your, our next student officio. All right. Um, next item on the agenda, please. Item 5B2, update on the ninth annual Jewels of Glendale fundraising luncheon. And can we have a report on that, Mrs. Yes. Alexander? Last Thursday, May 9th, was our Jewels, um, Jewels luncheon. We had, as of um, May 8th, the, the attendees were at 186. Um, I know a lot of people showed up at the door, but we are still reconciling the numbers and, and um, the funds. So we will have a report, a full report, with how much was raised and um, how the event did at a later meeting. But um, we did have 186 attendees that were counted for the day before the event and when the reports were due. And um, there were $9,500 in sponsorships. 
and 500 and in kind and the sponsors were at uh, the 5,000 level was a diamond sponsorship was Glendale Adventist Medical Center thousand dollars was massage MV spa Glendale Glendale Memorial Hospital uh, Glendale Management Association at the $500 Ruby sponsorship level was Glendale Water and Power Ascensia and Public Works and the $500 in kind was CV weekly um, so the, uh, the the feedback that staff received and I'm sure the Commission ev everybody was happy and said that it was a great event and they love the the MC Lisa Bowman um, they thought that she was great and um, she had taken the time to really get to know the honorees as well and um, of course the honorees for the jewel were Karina Gregorian, Armina Hagopian, Nasli Zelaya, Elisa Rosenfeld Ortiz and our gem um, honoree was Gabrielle Granados. Great. Okay. Um, Comment? Yes, Commissioner Devine. Yes, I would like to uh, thank and congratulate uh, Chair Miller and uh, Vice Chair Burns. I think it was a fabulous event. It was nice to have, um, I thought the MC was great and everybody else did as well, but it was uh, very well done and uh, really good feedback. So um, thank you for for all the work and staff as well. Thank yes. you all. You did. I know you did a yeoman's job. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Thank you. <laughs> and and I'd like to, uh, Chair, I'd like to echo um, her comments. Um, as, as is customary these days, I mean, every year we have a great event. Um, in the last four I've seen, every single year it's been excellent. And I thank the Chair and I thank the Vice Chair and I thank the staff because they did a great job. Well, since we are commenting about that, instead of waiting for comments, I will um, actually just would like to, to really um, acknowledge and congratulate Vice Chair Burns. She did a great job in her leadership of us from really, uh, there's more to it that, that maybe the public saw, which really lends itself to a lot of the greatness, but really tying in the signature piece, the flower on the invitation with the program, with the tables, with our colors. Uh, there, there was some real messaging in there about us as a community, as a commission and our unity around this Jules annual luncheon and I think that, that you really did a great job. Lisa Bowman was fantastic. Every one of our awardees, I want you to know that of all the people who were even nominated, and I encourage people to continue to nominate women every year, it's getting harder and harder to narrow it down to just the people that receive that award. Um, and so we appreciate the support of the community, and we also finished, was it 20 minutes early? 20 minutes early. So we were t 10. Well, I heard 20 the other day. But whatever the case, we finished early, and I think that that was a real message as well in terms of honoring people and then all of us going back to work. So great event. Did you want to comment as oh, at I all? was delighted. Great. Um, the performer also was fantastic. I cannot remember her name. Rena Strober. Yes, but she had such a voice and was very... Um, Energetic. Yes, very she's energetic. very energetic and really liked to draw in the crowd. She was fantastic. You're right. She was. Okay, um, so if we um, could go on to the next item. Certainly. Item 5B3, Commission on the Status of Women's 2013 Master Calendar of Events. And is there any report on this or is there any... No. Comments? The calendars attached to the report. The mm -hmm. Commission would like to add anything to the calendar or make any changes. Happy well, if we could just look at our speaker for June, combating stress through nature. Um, I guess this would be a big call out to any of our master gardeners in the community who might really be able to come and lend a nice hand and give us a lecture as we look towards June. I think that was the original thought of com Commissioner Garcifanian when he suggested this topic. So if we could uh, please know and please reach out to Teresa at the city um, or any of us as commissioners and we would welcome having you come to speak to us about that. Okay. The item is now closed. So if we could go on to the next item. Item six, commissioner staff comments. All right. And if we can start down here with our 
Um, I just, as I mentioned before, love the self-defense classes. I think we need to continue it every year. And I do agree with Amy that a fourth class would be better. Um, also, I wanted to um, mention that I would love to have Ms. Terry and Ms. Infini come to Glendale High School to speak against bullying because Adelante Mujer focuses more on uh, career and for women to grow in the um, in the job in jobs you could say but what they're doing is more mental health and I like the aspect I think girls can very benefit from it so if, I would love to have them come speak in Glendale thank you Commissioner Devine um, well let's see I attended the uh, Glendale Youth Alliance employees of tomorrow luncheon and that was a terrific uh, event uh, this organization um, provides education and employment, leadership skills for youth in our community, and I think all of you know about them because they come out in the summer and clean up the brush, and it's always wonderful to support Glendale Youth Alliance, and I was happy to be there. YWCA Award Luncheon was terrific. They honored uh, Lena Bazoyan, who is a former commissioner on uh, the status of women, and of course they had um, uh, uh, Tony Beck, Espinoza, Dory Potts, Mary, Mary uh, Margaret Smith, and Joylene Wagner were their honorees, and that was a terrific slate. Uh, that night I went to uh, support the YWCA uh, when they uh, viewed uh, the Invisible War, and I want to congratulate uh, Lisa Rajo. She had a packed house um, at the YW. Uh, this is um, uh, the film that was nominated for an Academy Award, and it deals with the abuse and violence against women in the military. And uh, it was uh, unsettling, and it was uh, compelling. Uh, and all I can say to the community is whatever you can do to support the vets, male or female, uh, please do so. Um, they need our help. Uh, I, on the lighter side, I was asked by Zazette Mullins, who is the um, uh, city clerk in Burbank, to MC a fashion show for the uh, Verdugo Glen chapter of the American Business Women's Association, and that was uh, great fun. Uh, I was announcing the Chico's fashion, so, but it was great to be among these women who were raising funds for scholarships for young girls to uh, go into business and, uh, you know, get educated in uh, the business field. So thank you, um, Suzette, for that uh, invitation. The ARS Festival was Saturday um, and Sunday, and I went on Sunday. Big crowd, always fun. Congratulations to um, all of the, the women of the ARS. They do a terrific job singing, dancing, eating, what could be more fun. <laughs> Uh, so uh, congratulations to them. I want to announce in uh, the police, uh, Glendale Police Department uh, uh, awards luncheon, which is coming on uh, May 16th. If you're interested, they're going to be honoring a lot of officers, I've heard. It's a big slate. So um, if you'd like tickets or re to make reservations, 818-548-2830, uh, and uh, that would be great if uh, we get a huge uh, crowd there. Uh, I want to uh, mention that last month I did go on a, a um, vacation uh, where I was in several foreign countries. I was particularly impressed in two countries, Bhutan and Rwanda, uh, for their efforts uh, to support uh, victims of violence, the uh, Rwandan genocide, uh, AIDS, and uh, they have created shelters. They have created support systems similar to our YWCA. Fantastic job that they're doing. The important thing here was all of these uh, organizations were started by women for women. And I think we have to remember that locally, globally, there is an issue of violence against women. And lastly, and I'll get off my soap, soapbox, but in the wake of the incidents, the kidnapping, and the imprisonment of the three young women in Cleveland, Ohio. I look at that as a wake-up call for this community, for every community, but let's just stay in our community. Please know your neighbors, watch your neighbors, be careful, um, and report anything that looks um, suspicious. Um, 
this you probably all say well this could never happen in our community but we don't know that okay so be alert be vigilant and be careful thank you vice chair burns well thank you <laughs> <laughs> everything that that mrs divine said <laughs> yeah um the only thing that i have to just pass on is um the annual Arbor Day observation, our commission uh, contributed a tree to honor the memory of Larry Zarian. And um, this is through Glendale Beautiful Arbor Day. And I wanted to pass it on to the chair. And I presume it would go to... Teresa. No, it would go to Teresa. In our... All right. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Other than that, everything that you said is probably correct. The thing that I'm going to say, just one little thing when you said stay in town and watch your neighbors and, and try and figure out what, what's going on. It's, this is something that I think the police have done a, a not too great job on because they, we, we talk about Calling the police if we feel uncomfortable about something, if something isn't doesn't sit right, and several times I've had the experience of thinking, "Oh, I wonder if I should call." You know, you get that feeling. You wonder if you should call, but you don't. I've tried a couple of times, and I haven't felt comfortable about the response that I've had. So when I call and I say there's someone parked in a car, sitting in front of my house for an hour and a half. Well, what do you think they're there for? Well, I don't know, but would you mind coming and checking? It, the response that I got didn't feel good. So I would rather like whoever I spoke to at the station to say, do you think they're casing the house? That was what I thought after an hour and a half. Uh, and I made a statement, <clears throat> they don't seem to be the, didn't seem to be the kind of person that would be parked in front of my house, or your house, or your house. So we need to really get some communication that when citizens call, um, with, with anything that, that is, is um, upsetting them, or anything that they've got a question about. I mean, I'm going to feel like a donut if this guy's sitting watching waiting for his wife to pick him up. But the point is, we do need to do exactly what you said. We've got to realize that maybe there are women in a house that that we don't know about. But I'd like the police to respond. Just a reminder, we're in comments. We're in oh, commissioner oh, comments. Well, I want to comment on that. I want them to be, I want them to be, yes, indeed, oh, we'll take, you know, we'll take a look. Thank you. Did I comment too much? Sorry. Uh, I no. Think. There's. A, do, do you have any other no, comments? Not on on, no. on a different topic. No. Okay. I'm Moving along, Commissioner uh, Tashtian. I think she took up my time. <laughs> ah. So I'm not going to say I'm anything. Sorry about you. Say something. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> say something. <laughs> Student next officio, Amy Yagian. Yes, I have a few different comments. Um, I'd like to say Foothills Relay for Life was this past weekend, and it was a fantastic event. Um, it was the million dollar year, so within the uh, lifespan of Foothills Relay for Life, we have officially raised a million dollars, oh, wow. which is very exciting. Um, I was on the Prom Plus team for the fourth year now, and we were fifth place in fundraising, which is huge for a group of high schoolers and uh, different people throughout the community. Um, in addition, speaking of Prom Plus, um, our event is this upcoming weekend. It's from midnight to 5 in the morning, which is when the students will be there, but we'll be setting up all day at the uh, Crescenta Kenyatta YMCA. Um, we're still accepting donations of gift cards or items or just if you'd like to come and volunteer, um, you can check out promplus.org. Um, also, I'd like to congratulate Isabel Martos Repath of the Crescenta Valley Robotics team. She has been named the uh, 
one of the members of the Dean's List at the world level. She has won over thousands of different students, um, and now she'll be able to attend the FIRST Summit, and FIRST stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, and I'd just like to congratulate her for her achievements. Hey. Well, uh, in the interest of time, I will keep my comments um, very simple. Um, but nonetheless important. I first want to start with going back to our mission, and, and a part of our mission reads about elevating the status of women. And in that statement, I would like to give a big congratulations to Commissioner Devine, who was selected as Adam Schiff's Woman of the Year for 2013. And you participated in a luncheon with him, and there was a celebration. And did he announce it in the congressionally? Was yes, there some? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, your mic. Your, it was in the congressional record. Yes, it is on the. Yes, so now my name and and uh, the commission and our um, CPR program, they're all in the congressional record. First That's session. fantastic. Great. And congratulations on that. I also want to identify. I was at a number of of events that took place in April as well, and I especially was so moved by the GYA luncheon that we attended on April 17th, and especially given that we knew later in just a few more weeks, we would be honoring their executive director, Karina Gregorian, as one of our jewels. So that was, that was lovely. Um, a big congratulations to us on our efforts during April for the Sexual Assault Awareness Month and for everybody attending and for the public and their support of that. I do have just two comments, and one of them moves me. I must, because of the discussion, I must put on my uh, Police Foundation hat for a second and just identify that while all we, these, because the name of the police came up, I think it's fair to say because I have the information and I believe Commissioner Devine is also on that foundation, that, you know, remember we are in the fourth largest city in the state of California and if you look at the statistics, we are in one of the safest cities. And so um, kudos to our department for, uh, for keeping us safe and also with all of us keeping our eyes open for anything that could go on as well. Um, I do want to just remind the public, keep in mind it's pretty warm out there this week and I do work with the senior population and I would encourage you to have water with you at all time, to take rest breaks as you need and to not get overheated um, so that we can all bear the heat together as well as uh, what it's going to do to our air conditioning bills this next week. But with that said, I think we had a really successful May as a commission, um, and we look forward to seeing you in June. And with that, I do need a motion to adjourn. I'll make, I'll make a motion to adjourn. And do we have a second? Second. This meeting is adjourned at 7.24 p.m.